Our world is super connected in an extremely shallow way. Have you noticed that? That there's not a lot of depth and life? Hello friend, my name is Zach. If you're new here, welcome. I don't want shallow connections. I'm not sure that you do too, because you clicked on this video. Uh, we want deep, meaningful connections. And those that can happen, I'm gonna teach a few little hacks that'll help you go from shallowness to depth. But before we do that, I just want to say, there's two like things that keep us stuck in the shallow end. One is that we just stay there. I know that might sound like common sense, but a lot of times it doesn't get deeper because the conversation doesn't get deeper. We stay in the shallow. What do you do for a living? Did you watch the game last night? How was your week? Fine, fine. We're a bunch of fine people walking around. And so if we're not willing on an individual basis to go deep, it will not go deep. See, it takes two people with willingness to actually make it happen. And I think the second one is just as damaging. Honestly, I tend to do this more than I like to admit. And it's, we go from zero to 60 all at once. Like, there's no dance. We go straight into the deep end. Tell me the deepest, darkest sin you've committed in your life. Like, that would be unnerving. By the way, I've never just went up to someone and asked that. That would just be weird. But that's how some of people operate. They so despise the shallow end that they don't spend any time in it. The problem with that is most of the world is shallow, so it's almost like you're jerking someone awake when you go so deep, so fast. So the shallow isn't bad. It's just not where we should stay. Here's how to not stay there. Number one, ask open-ended questions. Here's the thing. We often ask close-ended questions instead of open-ended ones, and then shocked that we get minor answers back that are shallow. See, a closed-ended means that you could have a yes or no answer. Did you work? Yes. So how do we have more open-ended questions? They'll usually start with how, why, what. You want to make sure they don't have a predetermined response so that if you ask, how are you doing? Fine. Will usually be the response. So that would be more of a close-ended question. You want there to have to be explanation with their response. And if you slip into this close-ended question, it's fine as long as you have a follow-up to that. So how was your day? And they're responding back and telling you that it's fine. Oh, great. Well, what made it fine today? This is a way to turn a close-ended to more of an open. But here's the thing, though. You can, might shock a few people. <laughs> if they're just wanting a greeting, and now you've taken it deeper, just realize that that might be a problem. Now, there might be a little awkwardness. But one of my friends says, and I love the statement, Embrace the awkward. Because this going deeper in connection sometimes is very awkward and bumpy in the beginning. And if you are more of a feeling person, I am, um, and more introverted, I am, I'm more worried about how you come across, then that bumpiness, you're going to feel it so much greater than what it actually is going to feel like you're driving over potholes when maybe it's just a little bit of a nuance. Or maybe you're a type that silence really bugs you, really gets to you. And someone's silent, that's going to feel very awkward. And so you're going to want to fill it with your words. Resist that temptation and let them have time to think. Too often we rush people along in the conversations. And that causes it to not have this deep connection. This deep end requires some little dancing and nuance. 
if you're struggling with more open-ended questions and what questions to start with and ask, you can Google small group questions. Usually those will be open-ended because in a small group, you're trying to encourage conversations and avoid those closed answers. All right, so you've asked an open-ended question. The next step is to follow up questions to go a little deeper. See, this allows the person to start out a little more shallow and just share wherever they are. You'll find out a gauge when you ask them a question, they give you an answer, how much they're wanting to share with you. And then here's the thing. You're going to have to really listen to what they're saying. You might be tempted to interrupt them with your thoughts on whatever they're saying or hijack it in another direction, but please don't. Please, in that moment, listen to what's said and what's not said so that you can craft a good follow-up question. These things are skills that take time. And so I just wanted to say to you, like, if this is, sounds overwhelming, when you haven't done it, it is overwhelming. But over time, you'll get used to asking people questions. And the more you get a deeper conversation going, more often with that person, they'll be used to it. And it's like a whole richness comes out. In fact, I meet with a group of guys on Tuesday morning. Do you know what our script is and our plan? We don't have one. <laughs> and... A once hour meeting now goes two hours often of just conversation and arguments and all the deep stuff that happens in that. Challenging assumptions because it's been practiced. But it's also because there's follow-up questions. Listen and ask. Ask. Don't assume. That's my problem. I don't know about you, but I tend to jump in and assume someone's thinking something. It takes a big, just a quick question, just to go a little deeper. And then you're going to implement the next step. And this is mirror. So someone shared something. You asked them a follow-up question. Mirror back what they said. If they told you they had a hard day, and then they proceed to tell you what made it hard. Mirror back, man, so I'm hearing it was super tough because of this. In your own words, here's what that does. It lets them know that you understood. Like you really understood them. Makes them feel heard. And it makes sure that you did hear them correctly. Because there's so often that you and I are talking to each other and we're intending to say one thing but someone hears something else. That is the difference between intention and impact. And if we're not measuring it, if we're not asking questions, if we're not mirroring back, we don't know if intention and impact match. See, there's been times where that Tuesday morning meeting I was telling you about, where someone said something, I start to challenge it and tell them why they're wrong um, <laughs> or whatever, or my thoughts on it. And then we're like 10 minutes down the line and then I realized I heard them wrong. Like I interpreted it differently than what they were trying to communicate to me. Or they said a side word that oh, I really didn't think that. See, the mirroring helps that intention impact matter. And then, super cool part, is there anything else? See, if someone's unpacking that anything else, gives them permission to continue. Some of us need it. Some of us don't. And you don't know what that person is until you ask. And frankly, how many times do people hear you, one, and number two, ask you if there's anything else? Hey, do you want to share anything else about that? That is rare. Do you remember a time someone's done that for you? There's very, been very few times where someone's actually done that with me, where they've heard me, they've mirrored back, and then they said, is there anything else? Almost every single one of those moments, though, I could tell you who it was and what we were talking about. It was very meaningful for me. All right, the next step. Better questions. 
as you experiment with this and you try to ask your open-ended questions, it, you're going to want to make sure you're asking better questions. Here's a little trick, though. It might not be different words. Here's what I mean. A common thing parents do to kids is they say the statement, what were you thinking? That is not a question. That is a judgment and a shaming. We're not asking them what they were thinking. We're telling them they weren't thinking. This can simply be switched with different tone of voice. What were you thinking? And a few extra words in that moment. What were you thinking? That is representing that someone really actually wants to know. What were you thinking then? And my body posture, look, I'm leaning forward. I'm wanting to know. And so when I say better questions, I'm not even saying you need different words. I'm saying make sure that your tone and your body language is communicating curiosity. And that makes a better question. And look, as you're going around trying to form these deep connections in a superficial world, what you're going to find is you're going to find certain questions hit home with a lot of people. And then other questions die flat. And this is how you develop a little more questions. In fact, when I'm counseling people, I have about the same five or six questions I ask in a certain pattern. Why? Because I've practiced them. They're ones I know. There's, they're ones that I know get someone to reveal in certain situations. They're ones that I know that get people to open up. And they're in my wheelhouse of things that I have a little understanding of. And so your better questions to get a deeper connection will be formed with time. But a quick hack is just make sure that your body language and your tone of voice is matching what you're trying to communicate. Number six, ladder your way to vulnerability. So as you're doing these open-ended questions and you're asking follow-up questions and you're mirroring back, you can have several steps to being more and more vulnerable. And you can read the person you're communicating with. If they have a willingness to go deep with you and wanting to go deep, or they don't. Because all of us are different. You might desire a super deep connection with someone. They might not desire that deep of a connection with you. And that's okay. It's not a judgment. We only have time for a certain amount of relationships. So it's not a rejection when someone doesn't want to go. But read their body language. Look at them. Are, are they comfortable with the questions? Are you engaged with them? And that way you can ladder your way to a more vulnerable place if you both want to go there. But please, don't force it. It doesn't feel good for them, and it won't feel good for you. Not every connection has to be deep. And if you're desiring these deep connections, you can fall into that trap that every single conversation has to be deep or it does not matter. That is not the point of the video. It's that some conversations should go deep. And this would be how you would get there. But it takes two to tango. All right. So if you want to connect deeply, you really have to listen. And I mentioned it earlier, but I did not have time to go into the full details of what it means to truly hear someone. And if you want to get better at listening, and if you want deep connections, you should watch this video right here. I know it'll really help you out.